All right, hey, what's up, guys? Mine's are fast storm. Welcome to another RPG Maker tutorial. Today we have trading from Xenoblade Chronicles, and this is the first tutorial of this month's theme, which is systems online. Though it, the name doesn't really matter, and for that matter, the month doesn't really matter. But I'm gonna be doing four tutorials in one month, and uh, in light of this, I will be doing minimalistic editing, just like my previous tutorial, aka I'm not gonna be cutting every time I stutter. So if I happen to stutter. That's probably gonna stay in, unfortunately. Yeah. But let me explain what trading Xenoblade Chronicles is. So compared to other uh, RPGs where you may trade an item, or trade a specific item to an NPC who desires that particular item, in Xenoblade Chronicles you can basically offer up any item you want for a specific item that an NPC is, is offering, as long as that item is of greater or equal value. And, yeah, it's a bit simple, but we'll be covering it today. Alright, let's do this. Alright, we're gonna be going into our plugins. Just to tell you that there are no plugins required. Uh, two recommended plugins, however, in case you ever so need it, are Map Select Equip from Yanfly. If you want to select equipment items for uh, trade. And disable choice conditions in case you want like an option that says... Or at least if you want multiple items to be traded from an NPC, you can totally do that. You feel free. Anyways, we're going to our variables, because we have a few here, and they're pretty important. They're actually quite important that they're required. Uh, so we can network, we're going to our common event as well. Uh, we actually have three variables. Two variables, I apologize. Uh, we have item number and value player item. Item number is simply our variable that we're having the event command map select item, or select item be uh, aligned to. So basically, if we want to choose an item, this variable will store that item value, or item ID. 110 value player item is what we're using this common event for, which is identifying and establishing an item's value. Doesn't necessarily have to be the price the item is, but for consistency's sake, we are going to be doing that. So if I had an item that says, uh, if an item, like say item 37 right here, is actually 500 gold, then in our common event tab we'll be setting the variable to uh, 500. Which by the way, this common event is just going to be, since it's just establishing it, nothing really special needs to happen here. Basically, if if a particular item is selected in your map select, uh, in that particular uh, selection, it will just be establishing the variable right then and there. Onto our items, actually, uh, nothing really needs to be special here except for the fact that we kind of want to include <laughs> these, uh, well, I'll go over that soon, actually. We'll be going over these items very quickly and then go on to the eventing immediately. But basically, while there is this description here that says it's value in case you forget, uh, when you're selecting items, you actually can't see the description, which is unfortunate. Which means we're putting it in the name. Which is annoying, but there has to be some other way that I don't know that you can show the value of an item. Or at least the description, at least. Otherwise, this is what we're going with. We're basically putting it in the item name so players can't... Or players can easily see the value of the item. Which, speaking of the value of the item, let's go to our map here with our eventing. We have this one event here that just gives us uh, three particular items of 500 gold, 1200 gold, and 1600 gold value, respectively. Now, let's go to our first event here, which is this warrior right here. Uh, in the beginning, we'll be setting item number and value of player item, both of these variables, to zero. So nothing goes wrong, because, yes, things can go wrong, you'll see later. <laughs> Anyways, we'll be having this little option, Trader Speak. More closer to its uh, original uh, incarnation. But, anyways, if we select trade, we'll be setting a label. Doesn't matter what you have to put in, doesn't matter what you call the label. We just want to come back here in case we select an item that is invalid. Which, because, well, mostly because in the original uh, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, you cannot really select an invalid item because they filter out those items. But I don't think we can easily do that here. 
So we, we're gonna have to make do with what we have. Have a little message right here. Then we're gonna have the player use this event command to select an item. We'll be selecting it and storing it into our variable item number. It will be uh, actually I'll just open this up. We'll be selecting regular items because key items you don't. Well, if you want to if you want to select key items instead, go ahead, feel free. But you have to make like different variables or something. Actually, no, you don't. You, you should be fine. You said to change some stuff around. Uh, basically, we'll be selecting re regular items, and then we'll be checking if an item was selected. Now, if the item value is zero, that means an item wasn't selected because. Well, first of all, we have this reset at the beginning here, so we can immediately set a zero uh, regardless. But if an item wasn't selected... I'm trying to think here. Actually, uh, I need to fix something down there, but I'll, I'll go over it really quickly. Uh, if an item value of over zero is... Uh, well, if, the, if item number, if the variable item number is over zero, that basically means an item was selected in general. And if it, if it wasn't selected, then we're just going to be basically uh, quitting the event, thing, basically. Very simple. Anyways, we then want to check if the chosen item is of greater or equal value. So this first item here is actually going to be of 1000, and we'll be having a conditional branch. Well, actually, first of all, we need, we need to use this common event right here so we can identify the item number. Uh, this part, the, part, the item that was selected we want to identify its value at least. Then we want to check if this value is greater than 1000 because this NPC's item is 1000 gold. And if it is greater, then we'll be having sound effect, have a little message, gain this item. I'll explain the script later, but if we don't have an item or if we didn't choose an item that is greater than that value, then we'll be uh, have a different sound effect and jumping back to the label. Very simple. But, if we do have an item of higher value, or higher or equal value, and we're using the script, which is quite long, um, basically, this entire script, well, everything that's outside this bracket here, basically uh, has the player gain an item in general. However, this everything inside this bracket basically determines that the ID of the item we we were giving is uh, equal to the value. Their ID is the same as the value stored in item number, which is why we're having this extremely long script right here. We also want to set it to minus one because we're not gaining an item, we're losing an item. I apologize if, if, I, apologize if I didn't explain that well, but I can't really explain this entire script well, especially bit by bit, but basically copy what, what you see here. Then we'll be turning self switch A on if all the items have been traded. And we just have a different event page for that. I also have a different NPC on the left there, but that's not really important. I'll just go over in demonstration. Oh, actually the thing I wanted to fix was actually copying this and putting it right here. Because if we happen to select an invalid item and then exit, well, I think this doesn't really matter, but I'm just gonna do that anyways. Alright, so we're going to demonstration now after that very long explanation. Just kind of sync it up a bit, and here we are in the demonstration! Alright. Now we go into this item patch here to get some items. Torn Cloak, Preserved Tooth, and Orange Feather. 500 gold, 1200 gold, and 1600 gold, respectively. We'll be talking to this Magus War- oh, before we're talking to the Magus Warrior. We go into our inventory. As you can see, we have these items. Anyways, we'll be talking to this warrior right here. We'll be trading. And he wants to trade us an Azure crystal. Azure? Azure. Azure. Azure sounds better. 1000 gold. So basically, we can't use the Torn Cloak because, well, this item is of no interest to me. He does not like the Torn Cloak because the Torn Cloak is of less value than what he's offering. Anyways, Preserved Tooth and Orange Feather are we are what we had to go with. We actually want to go to Preserved Tooth just so I can uh, demonstrate to Orange Feather a, a little bit later. And by a little bit later, I mean very soon. So we're training this Preserved Tooth. And we'll be obtaining the Zero Crystal. 
Now, referring back to the script as uh, I uh, explained before, we actually do have the item removed from our inventory, so that's good. Uh, I should probably explain the script a little bit. Basically, you have to use the script because you cannot designate a variable as an item to be removed from the change items at that command. Never mind, too, too, too uh, complicated. But yeah, basically, we had the Azure Crystal, Azure, Azure, Azure Crystal, and not the, uh, the tooth. <laughs> We still, we still do have the orange feather, though. And we'll be talking to this lady here. And we'll be trading for an ice cube. 1600 gold. Now, that just happens to be the exact price of our orange feather. And she seems to accept it, so we're fine. <laughs> yeah, basically we're good. We obtain the ice cube as expected. And do not have the orange feather anymore. Very short demonstration, but... Well... Feel like it should be demonstrated a bit, which is what the demonstration is for. But anyways, all right, I'll see you at the outro. All right, that tutorial is finished. Thank you guys so much for watching this first tutorial of this, of this month for Systems Online. And wow, okay, actually, I wasn't planning on having two Xenoblade tutorials back to back. I was actually trying to have. Uh, a different one. It just it's just gonna take a little bit more time. It's not it's not thrown away entirely at least. So that's good. Yeah, I'm actually really busy this month. Um between making four tutorials, Pokemon Crystal Randomized Nuzlocke, because that one takes a lot of time. And uh something I need to prepare for April 1st, because hey, it's a three-year tradition at this point. Yeah, I don't think I have time working to work on my own game. That's how much time I'm losing. Between having to exercise and stuff, because under these conditions, it's, uh, I'm, I was less inclined to exercise, but here we are. Now I am. Anyways, yeah, about, enough about me. Well, there is one thing I wanted to say, but it's not really important. Yeah, I'll, I'll save that for some other time. Anyways, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and with that, I say, see you guys, and stay safe.